Hey guys, welcome to BP, the Bible Perspective. By your own standards, why couldn't you date a bus driver? Now before we unpack this, please like and share this video and subscribe to BP, the Bible Perspective. And as always, if you have a thought or comment, add it to the comment section below. All comments are welcome. By now, I'm sure you heard the viral statements by Ebony K. Williams. When she was asked a question by Dr. Ayana Vitance, why and she asked would you date a bus driver Ebony's response was if he owned the bus now I want to explore that because <clears throat> I want to ask the question by your own standards Ebony why couldn't you date a bus driver now this question is not what you think uh, let me set this up I think the backlash on her statement is unfair. I think she's unfairly criticized. Her statement should have been understood in the context of the entire um, interview or conversation. Her statement, though I disagree, and this is what I want to explore, I believe she misses a key point, but for different reasons. And so I want to unpack her statement. But before I do, uh, let me say this. I recommend you listen to the entire interview for the entire context. I'm just going to be highlighting three clips. So here we go with clip one. So in, an, in a recent interview with our dear friends over at the Breakfast Club, uh, that went very viral for very good reason, uh, you said that women are being trained to be men in skirts. Um, I, I will acknowledge, I will, I will say I was triggered, I was a hit dog, and I hollered to, to the entire production team to, to get you here today because I, I actually think you're right. I think you're right, Ayanla. I do think um, that, I'll just speak for myself vulnerably, uh, when I think of a masculine um, posture and what I would expect a man to do in my life. Uh now, right there is what I, what I want to I want to highlight what she expects a man to do in her life. So file that. Let's continue. Two things come top of mind and they are provide and they are protect. And when my lived experience, um, and I, I think I'm still relatively young, I guess, but I'm 40 in, in, in September. So, you know, I've, I've, I've had some, some relationships and I've yet to find a man who has shown, I mean, this includes even my father who was absent. I've yet to have a male energy that provided or protected me consistently ever. Mm -hmm. So I think that mm -hmm. I have taken on the reins to protect and provide for myself. Cause what I'm not going to do, Ayanla, is be without baby. It's not happening. Be without what? So that be would without be without protection, be, be without protection oh. and be okay. without the necessities of life. Okay. So, so, okay. but, but, but I say okay. that. Okay. Now, so I want you to think about this. She said her expectations from a man is protection. What she means by <coughs> protection is material protection, financial protection. Now I'm gonna come back to that point, but understand that's what she means. This is why the question later comes up about the bus driver collides with this. Now I wanna play a clip too. So in, an, in a recent interview with our dear friends over at the Breakfast Club, uh, they went very viral for very good reason. Uh, you said that- Oh, that's the one, one. I'm gonna go to clip two. Here we go. Registrations, uh, because I am curious. Um, I, I, yeah, yeah I, I had a very lovely um, b single black mother, um, and, and I'm gonna get to the statistics on single black motherhood and, and, and family life. Uh, but she was, by, by definition, more of a father figure in terms of providing and protecting. Um, and, I, and I think that's very common. So according to the U.S. Census, Ayanla, 23% of households in the country are single parent households, and we know 80% of them are led by women. How does this affect the child, uh, both l little girls, little boys, non-binary children? Okay, now I had 
the, the reason why I'm playing this clip is because I think there's a mental setup here. When she mentions her mother, okay, now I'm not going to, I dealt with this in another video when I said, was this interview messy? And, 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 and so that statement, when she brings up her mother, the reason why I think that's pertinent is because her mother was a single parent, but a bus driver. So keep that in mind. Let's go to clip three. <laughs> been forward to straightening my crown, uh, Dr. Ayana. <laughs> Let me ask you this. Let's get to the logistics, though. Let's get to the logistics. We know that black women are earning college degrees faster than anybody else. Many of us uh, are doing like, like, like we're doing, Ayana. We're getting those terminal degrees, those JDs, MD, PhDs. We also are the fastest growing group of entrepreneurs, uh, along with Latina women in America. Pew Research said that women are now out earning men out earning men yes. in 22 yes. of the largest cities in America, including where I live, New York, D.C., L.A., you name it. When we talk. OK, now she's going to, to kind of get into it, but understand this setup here. And I think it's important to understand. She is she is accomplished. Now, remember the statement she said about what she expects a man to do for her which is to protect and provide. Now she's getting ready to get into, I've already accomplished those things. I'm protecting and providing for myself. My question is, why do you need a man? Why do you need a man for the reasons you stated? Here we go. I know that you've said that you cannot teach a man or tell a man how to be a man. So I will not ask you to indict men in this question. But I do want you to speak, Ayanla, to how women need to, uh, I don't know, position ourselves so that we can be in our divinity, so we can have our crowns right, how we can create and not build, when some of us, quite frankly, feel that the men that are available to us, and I'm talking about across the color spectrum, across the age spectrum, trust me, I've done them all, um, they are not positioned to protect nor provide because of some of the statistics we just talked about. They're not earning the incomes. They're not having the resources. And some of them are not even showing up in the leadership. Now, I, I, I see some contradiction here because when she mentions divinity, now that's some, to me, new age stuff that Dr. Fassant is in, which I don't agree with, obviously. But the idea is that what this being in your divinity, being on your throne, wearing your crown, doesn't that contradict now what you expect for a man to do what you expect or how you expect the man to provide for you? And I say that because she just stated she's already doing that. They already have the degrees. She's speaking to, uh, and both of these, both, both women here uh, are lawyers. She says that early on in the interview. They both have degrees. They're both lawyers. They're both making money. So here's my question. Here's my point. Uh, she's already doing what she, in a sense, is saying that she wants the man to do. So at this point, she doesn't need a man to pro protect her. So in other words, what she's asking, and then she's saying, well, I'm asking this because how do we position ourselves while we're wearing our, our crowns, while we're on our thrones, in our divinity? Well, that, that, that puts you, in a sense, separate, autonomous to a man, in some respects, above a man. You just said that some of the men, by the statistics, you can't find a man that's on your level. So, so this is the setup here. This is the setup. And here we go. Would you date a bus driver? You now, I think this is a, I, I think this was a sneaky question because remember, her mother was a bus driver. That's why I think she's asking specifically that. She could have asked, would you date a painter? Would you date a plumber? Would you date a, would you date, you know, an electrician, right? You could have said, uh, uh, could you, would you date a paralegal? 
There's a lot of things she could have said, but I think she specifically triggered. I think it was it, it was meant to trigger. Okay, and here is her response. Would you date if he bus? owns the bus? If he owns no. it, if he owns the bus, See, that's no. That's a okay. Now, I, I'm going to play out just a little of the answer. I think it's a good answer. But right here is what is what went viral when she says, if he owns the bus. So let's go back to my original question. Why couldn't you date a bus driver by your own standards? And I think by her statement, because she's looking for the wrong thing in any man. See, remember she goes back, she makes the statement, she wants a man to protect her and provide for her. In other words, she wants a man to pay her bills. So a bus driver to her doesn't make enough money to protect her. But is, is that all you're looking for in a man? It, you already date successful men. You're in the company. She's an extremely attractive woman. Finding men is not her problem. Attracting men is not her problem. She's already on the level. She's already in the uh, uh, in the circle, in the arena of successful men. How is that working for you? She was engaged to a man who had four children. That man, by her standards, let's assume, he was making money, but he had four kids. They were engaged to be married, according to her own statements. The reason why they broke up is because the man didn't value her. That was the issue. See, my thing is, is that you've already eliminated what you're saying you, you need from a man because you're already making money. So why wouldn't dating a bus driver be something that would be acceptable or good for you if he is good for you. Now, she's later going to say that. I'm not going to play the clip. She she actually goes and says that, that she said she would date a bus driver. Dr. Fassan says she would date a bus driver if he was good to her. That's the essence of what she's saying. So my question is, yes. So then Based upon your own standards, since you've already have your protection, have your money. Another interesting thing that uh, Dr. Fassan says is that she would date the man, but she would have her stash. She would have a prenup. And to which, you know, uh, um, uh, Ebony, you know, uh, laughingly agreed and also said, and you know, your staff, would, you would have enough in your staff. But it's a good point though, right? In other words, since you already have it, okay, you could you could have a healthy relationship with a bus driver because you're already protected. So now what is it what what else do you need from a man? Or what should you want from a man? How about just love? How about companionship? How about a relationship? And tell me why you couldn't have that with a bus driver. Suppose that bus driver owned his own house. Now, it may not be to your standards. Let's pay. Let's suppose he owned a fifteen hundred square foot ranch house, but let's say it's paid for. Maybe he has to title the uh, the the, the, um, the deed to his car. Okay, so he's doing all right for the bus driver. But if he's a good man, why couldn't you have a relationship with him? Why couldn't you have a value relationship? Why couldn't he value you? Maybe the bus driver wouldn't want your money. Maybe the bus driver wouldn't want your things. So if that's the case, why couldn't you guys, why couldn't you have a good relationship, a healthy relationship? And why does it have to be looked upon as you lowering your standards? Have the prenup. Be autonomous and enjoy each other. Value each other. Because out of all the men that you have been involved with, and you stated in this interview that you've dated all, all races, all kinds, and yet you still, you haven't found the man that you're looking for. How about 
just look for a person that you can value. Just my opinion. All right, don't forget to like and share this video and subscribe to BP the Bible Perspective. <coughs> Excuse me. And as always, if you have a thought or comment, add it to the comment section below. All comments are welcome. The next time I see you then.